I'll be straight up with you. I have always been a fan of the Honda Ridgeline, especially the first gen because it's just more attainable to me, but the second gen is a damn good truck as well. Now I'll let you all debate in the comments on what this vehicle should be called, but one thing that we cannot deny is that there's a lot of Ridgelines on the road, and today we're gonna find out why. So welcome to the second generation of the Honda Ridgeline. This came out in late 2016 for the 2017 model year. And of course, just like the first gen, it was based on the Honda Pilot. And in this case, the third generation Pilot. It was a big step in, I would say, the right direction for Honda to make the Ridgeline look like more of a pickup truck with its traditional box, but it still kept all the features that we love about the first gen Ridgeline, but in a more modern package. In 2021, Honda refreshed the Ridgeline to make it look a little bit more bold and brash with this new square front end, which was a fortunate departure from the more pilot and Odyssey style front end on the pre-facelift Ridgeline. Not that much has changed throughout the years because the platform of this is actually pretty good. So this Ridgeline in particular is a 2024 Ridgeline Trail Sport, which is a new trim, Honda's most rugged, off-road capable Ridgeline from the factory. It has all-terrain tires, different suspension, a skid plate, and some goodies inside as well. The MSRP of this Ridgeline Trail Sport in Sonic Gray Pearl, $46,000 as it sits right here, which is actually a little bit less than what I thought. I would think this would be in the 50s, but thankfully Honda has kept it to the minimum. It seems Honda has also done some repackaging to the Ridgeline's trim levels over these past recent years, which makes me suspicious of an upcoming generation of the Ridgeline. But you can choose your Ridgeline in 2024 from four trim levels. You start at the Sport, which is just under $40,000, about $39,800. Then the RTL, which is like the EXL version. Then the Trail Sport, like this one. And then finally, the Ridgeline Black Edition, which has actually been around since 2017 in the pre-facelift Ridgeline. But it was based, and it's still based, on the Ridgeline RTL-E, which was just killed off. The RTL-E was pretty much a Pilot Elite, but as a Ridgeline. You got all the bells and whistles of the Black Edition without all the Black Edition features. My dad loves his 17 RTLE. Now, thanks to its platform mates, the Pilot and also the Honda Odyssey, the Ridgeline has always had a pretty robust drivetrain for being a car truck. And this is also one of the biggest, but also one of the many reasons that I really like the Ridgeline. First of all, I'm shocked you don't get hood struts because the hood is kind of heavy, but it's okay. But this is the J35 Y6, one of the J series engines from Honda, a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6. It's single overhead cams, and in this application, it makes 280 horsepower and 262 pound feet of torque. The current pilot actually still uses this engine, but horsepower has been bumped up just a little bit, but it is a really good powertrain. To compete with the likes of the Tacoma, the Frontier, the Colorado, and the Canyon, Honda thankfully gave the Ridgeline one of the best all-wheel drive systems out there, their iVTM4 system that you can also find in the Pilot and also the Passport. Of course, it is a front-wheel drive-based system, but it can send up to 70% of power to the rear wheels and 100% of that power to either rear wheel, depending on slip. In terms of MPGs, the Ridgeline is also pretty solid as well. They claim 18 in the city, 23 on the highway, and a combined rating of 20. For me, because I've kind of been enjoying how this engine sounds, I've been getting about 17, 18, mostly in town. I have seen about 22 on the highway, which isn't bad. Unlike all of its competitors, the Ridgeline is only available in one cab and bed configuration. The full cab with four doors and the five and, no, well, almost five and a half foot bed. It's pretty comparable to 
a Tacoma of this same size, sitting at about 210 inches. And of course, before people start commenting, I know that the comparison between this and the Tacoma isn't completely apples to apples because the Tacoma is an actual truck with a body on frame construction. This one, they say it has a bit of a frame, but it's unibody. It's based on the Honda Pilot and also the Honda Odyssey, but more the Pilot because of the all wheel drive system. They need to improve ground clearance, especially on their off-road model. The wheels and tires look nice. They put all-terrain tires on the Ridgeline Trail Sport with 18-inch pewter five-spoke wheels. One of my favorite accessories that you could get on your Ridgeline, a set of crossbars, roof rails, a leveling or lift kit. This thing will really look, I'd say, aggressive. Now, even though the Ridgeline isn't as rough and tough as its competition, it is still pretty strong and I would say in terms of payload and towing it still is worth your look. Up to 1500 pounds in the bed even though the bed isn't as long as you can get in a long bed Tacoma these are still very strong in standard composite plastic bed so you can dump rocks in here dump soil all types of things. It is still extremely usable you can fit a 4x8 sheet of plywood completely flat between the wheel wells you can also fit a riding lawnmower with the deck still on it in the back of this. It'll stick out just a little bit, but it still fits in here. I've done it myself on my dad's, of course. <laughs> you can see that the tailgate goes down like a normal pickup truck, but if you didn't know this about the Ridgeline, another party trick about these things is the swing out tailgate. It makes it even more usable. As you can see, this Trail Sport has incandescent bulbs, but on the Black Edition and formerly the RTLE, you could get LED bed lights in here, but these still do the job. Something else that I was surprised to not see in the camp wilderness trim of this Ridgeline is a power outlet in the bed. You could get it in the Black Edition and also the old RTLE, but I don't see one in here. Something that makes me forget about that though is the built-in trunk inside the bed of the Ridgeline. These Ridgelines, this one and also the first gen were able to do this. There's a drain in the bottom of it and there's about seven cubic feet of volume in here. So you could actually fit a person in here if you wanted. You can also see the donut spear tire is inside of this compartment as well. So we can get away from this blustering wind. We can talk about how this thing tows. The Ridgeline can tow up to 5,000 pounds. Of course, you'll see people that can tow that can tow more, but this one does have the optional transmission cooler on it, so it'll be pretty robust. But 5,000 pounds is what these are rated to tow. There's also, I appreciate, a seven pin trailer harness down here. As we get into the rear seat of the Ridgeline, and thankfully into the warmth, you'll see that step-in height is very easy because this isn't as tall off the ground compared to all of its body-on-frame competition. The rear doors could open just a little bit more. There's a mod that I've seen on YouTube of people making them open a little bit more, but it would just make it a bit easier to get inside because these doors are kind of short. The floor is completely flat. The driver's seat is a little bit farther back than my driving position, and I'm five foot nine, so I'm actually pretty comfortable back here. Legroom is pretty decent. I can fit my feet under the seats. There's map pockets behind both sides of the seats. And then in terms of headroom, it's really good because it's pretty square. There's also a power outlet down here as well, but no USB type C back here, but at least there is an outlet. Thankfully, because this is a Honda, there's plenty of cup holders and storage back here. They build cup holders into the doors themselves with a little compartment for your phone. And in this case of the center armrest, it's nice and wide. There's two small cup holders and you can fit some like Chick-fil-A sauce in the middle. Okay, so now we're in the driver's seat of the Ridgeline. If you're used, well, these new Hondas give you a nice little welcome song, but if you're used to the interiors of the Pilot, Passport, and Ridgeline, it's very similar. It's been slightly updated to make it more usable, but first of all, here's the key fob. 
for the ridgeline. It's the same key fob as my dad's 2017 ridgeline. It's nice. You have the lock, unlock, and remote start, which is nice. And because you have push button start, you can leave this anywhere inside the vehicle. Put your foot on the brake and press the start button to go. I like that everything seemed to be laid out by someone with common sense. The HVAC is where I'd want it. The steering wheel is nice. It's new for this refreshed Ridgeline. I actually quite like it. It's another four spoke wheel. Because this is the Trail Sport, you have orange stitching on the wheel and as well as the seats and everything. There's also some buttons on the wheel as well. The left controls volume and audio and also some of the gauge controls. The right controls cruise control and some of the Honda sensing features as well as the heated steering wheel button, which the heated steering wheel really does get hot. A convenience feature that I quite like in this refreshed Ridgeline that you could not get in the old one is power folding mirrors. It makes it nice on the trail and also when you're pulling in the garage. Behind this steering wheel, you'll see that there's paddle shifters, which work pretty well, especially when you're in sport mode. But you can also see that the headlights are automatic, but not the wipers in this Ridgeline. Looking up at the gauges, they're actually the same gauges that you'll find in the new Pilot, Accord, Civic, a lot of the newer Hondas. I like it. It's a nice crisp white. The font is easy to read. There's a decent amount of information in here. I like that only half of it is digital because the speedometer itself is analog, but everything on the left is digital. But again, there's a lot of information that's very useful in here. Looking at the center display, this is new and improved for the 2021 Ridgeline. You can see that now we have a volume knob and tuning buttons. Thankfully, Honda did that because on the old system, having to do the bung, 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 bung. It wasn't that great. You do have the volume control on the steering wheel, but I love having a knob. The infotainment screen itself has been updated as well with Honda's latest version of Honda Link. The system first came out on the 2018 Odyssey and the Accord. It's very good. I've had no problems with it. The only times that I notice it can be a little bit slow is when you're first booting it up in the morning. Mainly I use Apple CarPlay, which is wired and wireless. Underneath that are the climate controls for the Ridgeline. You can see that up front here, there's three zones. There's one for the driver, passenger, and then one for the rear. But the rear passengers don't have controls for them. You can only control them from up front here. You can control the fan speed and the temperature. So it is a third zone, but I guess they don't want your kids meddling with the controls. Even though I remember, I think on the pilot, there was a lock button for the rear settings, so it just wouldn't do anything. The Ridgeline also has a wireless charger. There's also a USB type C port and a normal USB type A port alongside a 12 volt power outlet. And there's a lot of storage in here on the doors themselves. The center console is pretty deep. You can fit a water bottle standing in here, which is nice because this one has the nine speed transmission. It's now a push button selector. I kind of wish it had the old column shifter. That would be more satisfying to me, but I get it, I guess. When you put the car into reverse, there is a backup camera, no 360 view camera on the Ridgeline, but the backup camera is very clear with three views. There's a wide view, a normal view, and also a top down view. And of course the Ridgeline has rear cross traffic alert. The seats in the Ridgeline are also pretty comfortable. Of course, this isn't a sports truck or anything, but they're pretty supportive on corners because this corner is pretty well for a truck. And on long drives, they're very soft and very comfortable. I've not had any back pain or fatigue. I have a decent amount of shoulder support as well. The driver's seat is a full range, eight way power driver's seat but the passenger seat is only four ways, so you can't go up and down. But both seats are heated, three stages. Again, because this is a trail sport, it has all the orange stitching on the steering wheel, on the seats, the center console, and also trail sport is embroidered on both of the front headrests as well, so you know what you're driving. But I like that though. You can also see up top, there's a single pane moonroof. You can't get a pano moonroof on the Ridgeline for 2024. Something we do have though to end things off before we get going is that this has a power sliding rear window, which makes it pretty nice. It's not like old trucks where you have to 
go back there and reach to slide it yourself. But even that's not hard. Within the first few seconds of driving the Ridgeline, you notice it's car-based routes. And that's honestly okay. It feels much more civilized on bumps and harsh, well, harsh pavement, at least, compared to its trucks, or well, truck companions or counterparts that bounce in the back because of their solid rear axles. I'm gonna put myself in sport mode right now. Make sure the coast is clear. It really picks up, it really gets going. And the engine sounds great, especially when you get into VTEC. Like, what other pickup truck are you going to want to be doing that in? I mean, I see other people do that in trucks, but this one, it feels like you're driving a big Accord V6 with all-wheel drive. It really feels like that. It handles, I mean, it feels like a big car when you're whipping it around corners, but when you're having fun with it, or when you're just driving it, it mainly just feels like a big Accord. And that's honestly a good thing. It makes it feel like a great daily driver. It's not as fatiguing as some of its body on frame competitors. Now that I'm back in normal mode, the experience is also pretty nice as well. Throttle response in normal drive mode is a bit on the soft side, but it's more tuned for smooth driving. There was a Passport Trail Sport that just passed me in that same color. <laughs> On normal pavement, you'll see that the Ridgeline rides very nicely. Because of its long wheelbase and it's pretty wide, it absorbs bumps very well. And this Trail Sport trim has slightly different damping and slightly different sway bars to make it a little bit more flexible off-road. But it's not that much of a compromise that I notice. I can notice maybe a little bit more body roll, but it's negligible. With these all-terrains, this Ridgeline has a little bit more road noise than the typical Ridgeline, but it is still pretty quiet. You can see it takes corners pretty nice. And then we'll jump here. Very smooth, consistent power. I love the engine in this car. And look, I already know that there's no arguing between whether it is a truck or it isn't a truck because I know you guys that think that this isn't a truck will never think that this is a truck. But I don't know. I don't think it's bad. It's not something to complain about because look, The torque vectoring helps you through corners. It's not just good off-road, it's great on the road as well because you can send it through a corner in a ridge line and you feel like you're in an Accord. It's fun, but it can also be civilized as well, like right now on the highway. Today is a very blustery day, so excuse the wind noise. Normally it is pretty quiet, but the ridge line, because of its big mirrors, I notice there is normally just wind noise in these. But besides that, on highway speeds, very smooth. They ride like full-size trucks, just as smooth as a full-size truck. The independent suspension really helps. And of course, with this V6, passing power isn't a concern either, because like, It's just, it accelerates, of course, because the power in these J-Series engines comes a little bit higher. You do have to rev it out, but it's honestly more enjoyable. Overall, I still really like the Ridgeline. At the end of this week, I've quite enjoyed it. I've never really lived with one every single day of the week, even though we have one in my family. I actually did a video with my dad a few years ago, right here actually with his Ridgeline. If you wanna check that out, it's pretty cool. If you're thinking about buying a Ridgeline, I still condone the purchase. It's still a great truck to buy in 2024 because it's very practical, it's fun to drive on the road, while still being pretty off-road capable. There's actually a decent range of aftermarket equipment that you can get for your Ridgeline, thanks to 
all those companies out there to make them more capable. But I appreciate you all watching this Ridgeline video. I hope it was informative and entertaining. And I will see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Bye, peeps.